Finally at a point where I can take the plastic off of this machine. I've been waiting for this for a long time. So now that I've got the machine in place, it's finally time to go ahead and install the extruders and load some spools into the material base. So first thing I'm going to do is load the extruders that came with the Method X. Now these two are part of the reason why this thing is such a differentiator. The 1XA and the 2XA extruders are the high temperature material and support nozzles. And what that really means is that unlike other office based machines, this thing can do almost every material on the planet. Now, if you go ahead and add to that the labs extruder, which is our experimental extruder, it's got a hardened nozzle, really fights the uh, abrasions that happen in some of those composite materials and high-end things. This thing opens up the complete universe of material support. So this is something I wanted to get as well. For today, we're gonna start with the high temperature ones that come with the Method X. So let's go ahead and install those. Very simple process, actually. Just gonna take off our lid on top, and then we just go ahead and pop them in almost like a cartridge in an inkjet printer. Here's number one. We'll click it in place. And we'll take the 2XA and click it in place. Now on top, we have our feed tubes and they're marked clearly with a one and a two. Simply click those up on top of the nozzles. That's it, simple. All right, we've now changed this over to a high temperature machine. I think with that, we're ready to fire it up. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's it, machine's booted up. So I think it's time to go ahead and start loading some material. So the first material I'm gonna to choose to use on this machine is ASA. Now ASA is interesting because it has a couple of extra qualities. First of all, it's got some additional ultraviolet resistance. Second of all, moisture resistance. So this is great for components that are gonna be used outside, especially those are gonna be a direct exposure to the sunlight. Now for the part that I'm gonna print, it's actually gonna be a throwback to a few years back when I broke the handle on my lawnmower. Now, it doesn't necessarily require a lot of UV resistance because I don't leave my lawnmower out in the sun all the time. It goes in the garage. But for this purpose, we're going to use the high-end temperature materials because, again, that's why this machine is so special. So let's go ahead and start with ASA. Now, they come in these vacuum seal bags. So we're going to have to open this one first. When we're not using this spool, we're going to want to store it back in this bag. I chose the black color on this one, so it'd be a real good contrast to our support material. We're simply gonna go ahead, take our clips, make sure we don't have any crimps, and let's open material bay one. All right, so when I place the material in the bay, it's gonna automatically detect it. it actually sees it right up here, and it understands how much material is remaining. We're gonna take our spool, we're gonna go ahead and feed it into this slot. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the drawer. Nice, done. All right, very good. Next, and this is something I'm super excited about, is SR30 support material. It's the same kind of support material that goes in our high-end Fortis machines. So we're again talking about an office machine that does ridiculously high-end things. Game changer. Same thing, we're in a vacuum seal package. We'll want to store it in this when it's not in the machine. And this has a natural color to it, so it's going to contrast the black in our ASA for this print. 
and we'll put it in place. It'll recognize the type of material and then we'll simply feed the tube in slightly and hit load. It'll take care of the rest. Wait a little bit until we get some material extruding out consistently. And there we go. With just a couple of simple steps, I'm able to name the printer and connect it directly to my network. From there, we start the automatic leveling and calibration. There are sensors built directly into the build platform and they measure the position of each nozzle. It's good to do this each time you replace them or swap them out for a different type. After just a couple of minutes, we're prompted to insert the flexible steel build tray. From there, it continues the auto leveling process by touching off on the platform. And with that, this machine is ready to print. Overall, my first impressions are overwhelmingly positive. This machine not only looks good, but it's so simple and easy to use. When you put a spool in the material bay, the smart spool is recognized, not only for the amount of material that's on it, so you don't fall short when you're doing a print, but also the type of material. So it recognizes that the nozzle supports it and it sets the temperature properly. Simple. In my next video, I'm actually gonna throw back to a project I did four years ago. My very first piece of digital content where I had to rely on a very expensive machine to print a replacement handle for the throttle on my lawn tractor. Now, I can not only use stronger materials, but I'm gonna do it on a machine in my office. If you like the content that we're producing, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down there at the bottom. And if you wanna be notified when we put up new videos, there's a little bell next to that that'll make sure that you're informed every time we post new content. I'm Darren at Go Engineer. I'll catch you in the next video.